Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. It's another raid Shadow Legends video. This is the video you've been waiting for. Sand Lashed Survivor, new MVP of the clan boss. This is going to be a full guide. Check it out, guys. So let's get straight into her kit. Um, I've got to be honest, when I first read the skill set of this champion, I thought it was okay, but I didn't fully understand it. So I'm going to try and spell out what actually happens with this champion. So we have got an A1, which has got Provoke on it. This is going to be useful in all dungeon content. She attacks one enemy two times. When booked up, she gets a 50% chance to lay Provoke on one target. It's only for one turn, um, and it's only if this champion has got no debuffs. Let me just check that again. Places a Provoke debuff on the target for one turn if this champion has no debuffs, um, and it heals by 15% of the damage inflicted if this champion has a debuff um, so interesting i'm going to show that in some content any champion with a provoke on her a1 is solid you can literally use her in in something like the arena to pinpoint a champion that you want to basically take out the game same sort of thing in dungeons if there is an opponent that you need to stop using their abilities like an apothecary or i don't know someone's got like an aoe decreased defense you send her in on that person provoke them up and then basically nullifies their big abilities. Um, so that's pretty cool for an A1. A2, this is where she becomes a bit of a game changer. So she attacks all enemies, AoE hit, and it hits pretty hard. Um, and it decreases the duration of enemy buffs. So you think faction wars, you think um, dungeons. It's brilliant, brilliant for those areas. If you think about clan boss, you could wipe off the, the buff that he places on himself when it goes to negative affinity. Um, and then the second part of the skill is it increases the duration of all buffs on allies. This is huge. I think one of there's only three or four champions in the game that can do this. One of the champions that already does this really well is Krisk, and he is literally like top tier legendary. This can be done as well with this orc. Um, basically, think about it. If you've got a speed buff on, if you've got increased defense on, if you've got strengthen on with our new champion that's coming out on Battle Pass, He'll extend that buff for another turn every single time. It's not like a chance to do it. With buffs, you don't need accuracy. It 100% will happen when she uses this ability. Booked up, it's down to three turns, which is actually really quick. And I'll show you that in action soon. I'm actually... There's a few things I want to test with this, and perhaps we'll test it today. Does she extend things like unkillable for an extra turn? If she does, that could be pretty busted. Um, if you can imagine... Skull Crusher putting his unkillable buff up when he does his counter attack. If she extends that for the second turn, so that he's also unkillable for the second wave of attack, and this is on a free turn cooldown, I mean, it's, it's insane. So I need to check it. I don't know if it works yet. We're going to check it today. Um, and then she's got a passive, which is also insanely good. So she places 50% ally protection buff on all allies for two turns. When one ally's HP drops below 50%. So if a big hit comes in on one of your champs, instantly ally protection goes across all allies and she gets a block damage buff on herself for a turn. So basically what's happening is she soaks up all of that damage. She puts block damage on herself so she's not going to die straight out next go. It's actually insanely good in clan boss. I'll show you that as well later. And if all that wasn't enough, she's got one of the best... Um, auras in the game increase defense in all battles by 25 percent auras only affected by stats but basically you're talking about another 250 minimum let's say on average defense per champion is huge it's really good so let's uh i guess let's get into the marshes i've gotten so far so i've built her not to do a provoke right now i built her for a clan boss setup so at the moment i've built her with um the kind of general clan boss going into Warmaster um, offense. And then I built her defensively. So I've got turn meter gain here. I've got chance to counterattack here. Um, I've got reduced damage in all of this. So that's all pretty useful. And then this is all damage. I guess if you want her to do her provoke, you might go accuracy, accuracy, accuracy. Um, you might also look to do this one here to gain a bit more turn meter but I, I honestly think defense is probably the way to go with this champion like generally um, 
So yeah, I'd say this is probably about as good a build as you're going to do for most content. If you were trying to do maybe a PvP build, then you might push a different kind of setup. So you might want to go with something like a resistance setup so she's not going to take much damage. Um, yeah, I, I think that's probably how I would go actually. So we'll play around with that later as well. Um, in terms of how I've got it built right now, I've pushed defense up, I've pushed speed up, I've got a crit rate high. Uh, I'm, I'm not worried about accuracy at all right now. This is going to be my clan boss build. If I just wanted to switch her into like a dungeon build, all I'd need to do is switch this banner, which is a defense banner, into an accuracy banner. Okay, we've got one here. So I can pull her accuracy up. I can push her defense down a chunk to still be very good to go for dungeons. And we're going to do that a bit later. So reviews then. How do I think I'm going to review her? I think she's going to be pretty solid across the board. So arena, she's got to provoke. She can extend your buffs and buffs are king in the arena. You can imagine extending increased defense, increased crit rate, strengthen, counterattack, all of these great buffs. She extends them for another turn. Pretty solid. Um, so I think she's going to be a five and a five for arena. We're going to try that out. Campaign, she's got an AoE, A2. Campaign's probably, I mean, she actually will be good for, I think, Nightmare Campaign as like a double act with somebody else. Somebody that does decreased defense, perhaps um on an aoe but it's probably not her place really um clan boss is definitely a five and we'll see that soon minnows she will cruise through minnows faction wars i think she is top top draw for faction wars for the orcs uh, the fact that she can extend your buffs and reduce their buffs is huge it's massive um spirit keep no sorry i missed a couple for, uh, force keep she doesn't do any of the decreased defenses or weakens so she's probably a four. Finites, she has got a two hit A1, which is good. Buff extension. I don't think Finites is really her spot, but she wouldn't be bad there. So I think probably a four. It's quite nice. If she can extend counterattack to go for another turn, that's useful. If she can extend reflect to go for another turn, that's useful. Obviously, extending buffs is, is going to help you as well. Spirit Keep, she'll cruise through, that's fine. Uh, Dragon's Lair, so she hasn't got poisons and that type of stuff. But again, the, the, the utility she brings is different, but it's very useful. So probably a four or a five, maybe a four. Ice Golems, I think, will be one of the better spots. Being able to provoke those adds out either side of the Ice Golem is useful. Getting through those waves, reducing the time on, on the reflect damage. Uh, buff that they cast on the second wave is going to help. So I think she's probably a four or five. I'd go five on that one. Void Keep, she'll kind of cruise through it. Not going to give you too much more. Same with Magic Keep. Spider's Den, I was thinking about this one earlier. I don't feel like her kit is crazy good for spiders. It's not somewhere I'd take her, to be honest. Provoke on one target is not that useful. Uh, extend your buffs is useful. So if you put something like a block debuffs so that you don't get poisoned and increase defense with someone so you say you've got more some mage on your team you throw that up for an extra turn obviously that's useful but to take up a whole spot just to do that i'm not sure if that feels like that's enough so i think probably a free but still very solid champion so that's the ratings um just to say as well her base defense is very high it's really good for a epic which means you've got a lot to build on which is how i've been able to go um, basically I've gone defense, defense, defense here. How I've gone decent crit is because I've managed to get that defense into the amulet, which means I can put crit rate gloves on her. So if I go crit rate gloves, it just means that she's going to hit hard right the way through this. And I've gone defense and speed. So let's get into some content then. Let's show her first in clan boss, I think. No, thanks. I don't want to buy stuff. Uh, right, clan boss, let's go for it. I'm going to kick off on a Nightmare. I want to do Nightmare. I'm not really supposed to kick into Nightmare in my clan. I'm going to drop down to Brutal. Just, just kind of like reduce it by 5 million. And that's what Nightmare will be. That's a good indication of where we'll get to. So what we're going to do, I'm going to get rid of the big hitters. Uh, I'm going to do a combination of the two teams that I did against Stu Gaming to give you a feel for how that would look. So we're going to go with 
Uh, Sand Lashed as my lead. She gives me a really strong aura. She can take the hits. Uh, so she's a really solid lead. We're going to go Tay Rail. I just want to check. I think their auras are the same. Yeah, they are. So we're going to go Tay Rail in second place because I, he's more valuable to me to do decrease attack and defense than Sand Lashed's A1. So Sand Lashed becomes a better lead. Tay Rail comes off of the lead spot. Therefore, he's not going to get stunned. We're going to bring in Catacomb for additional hits. Um, we're going to bring in our Occult Brawler for a crazy amount of poison. And then we're going to bring in our Golden Reaper for speed. So I'd say this isn't the ideal team to go with Sandlash. Sandlash is better when she is trying to extend buffs. I don't have that many buffs in this team. Um, but she's still going to do a solid job for us in terms of damage. And she's going to extend the speed buff. I could bring in instead of him, I could go like this. I think we're probably going to do more damage like this. I could also bring in Steel Skull in one of these spots um, as, as, again, another buff to extend. Maybe I do bring in Greg. Uh, I do. Let's try it, actually. I'm going to try this first. So let's kick it off. And because this is a full speed team, everyone's running between 210 and about 260 speed. So we're going to go speed up. We're going to just get Poisons rocking with Cult Brawler. I'm going to get my increased defense up here and ally protection. Uh, we can do the triple hit. I want to do that first. I want to do that first. Maybe I do this and just get his increased attack up, actually. I'm going to do that first. Increased attack. And then we're going to extend all of those buffs. So see this? Attacks all enemies. Extends all buffs. So all of those speed buffs now are going to jump up by a turn. Everything else is going to jump up by a turn. Then the nice thing about Golden Reaper in this team is that she has the ability on Array 1 to reduce one of those cooldowns. So sometimes you get this up even quicker. Um, so we're going to go decrease attack. The reason why I wanted Tay Rail is actually gives me decreased defense as well. So we're going to go here. Three allies hit. Here we go. Everyone's going in. That's why Catacomb Counselor's in there. And that is basically the way this run will work. The passive doesn't really kick in until right towards the end of the run when people are starting to take a lot of damage. So for now, we're just going to run this through, hit it on auto, and yeah, I'll pull you back in towards the end of the run. Okay, here we go. So we're eight minutes into the run, full auto here, which is really far on a night... Uh, well, I'm brutal actually, not nightmare, sorry. So it's pretty far, but not crazy. Um, but you'll see here with these ally attacks, we're getting loads of damage in. We're getting a decrease attack on all the time. We've had a full turn meter, uh, sorry, full debuff bar up. See there, we just got that passive kick in. She becomes unkillable. And basically everyone else is able to tank up the damage that the clan boss is hitting for. It's so effective in clan boss, you can't even believe it. It's mental. Uh, we're about to lose Jareg, I would think. Uh, he's holding on pretty well though, considering he's not in life still gear. At eight minutes 40, no counter attacker in this team. Everyone's in decent gear to be fair. Um, but you'll see, we've I basically had increased speed on the whole game, like all fight, increased defense on for most of it as well, just increasing those buffs all the time. Um, so yeah, just insanely good at clan boss, like top draw. Um, so we're going to do this run, see where we end up. Then I'm going to throw her into my proper ultra nightmare clan boss team and see if she can cut the mustard amongst the big boys. But um, yeah, she actually works quite nicely as well with, with Golden Reaper because Golden Reaper has the ability to reduce the cooldown of an ability. Uh, but there you go, 28.37 million. So pretty nutty team for Brutal. Um, so what we're going to do now, I'm going to rehash her up for my Ultra Nightmare team and try there. Okay, so I'm trying something very different here uh, from my normal team, but I figured... Let's just try and shoehorn in Sandslash. So we've got ourselves a decrease attack, decrease defense, poison, damage, extend debuffs, extend buffs. So we should be able to extend the buffs of Marta um, and Badel in this team. That's the, that's the hope. So let's see how this runs. It'll be interesting just to see if, if actually all of those run through as you would hope. So we're going to go poison up, which will be our cleanse for when we get round to um, 
to the clan boss's stun. You're going to get a counter attack and an increased defense up. And these two are slower than the clan boss, but it's fine, they'll sink back in. Clan Slash is going to get a damage off. Rotus is in there. I just want to see if he gets some big hits going. Um, I think from here I can actually just auto now. That should all just run through nicely. So see that with your increased duration of all the buffs, including counter attack, including increased defense. Um, I'm going to see. I don't know if she reduced the debuff on him or not. I didn't see actually. This is literally the first time I've tried Rotus out as well. In my clan boss team, I've been sitting on him. I literally have had him for a week and not built him yet. This is the first time I built him up. So I'd be interested to see how that goes. He's actually taking the stun just because the, the buffs have actually fallen off in a weird order. But look at the amount of heals we're already stacking up. That's what I'm interested to see is how, how insane can we keep the healing from Bad L with this sort of setup? It looks like already pretty mental. But these heals are just like stacking up. Um, that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Does mean I've had to drop people. Like I've dropped my. I normally would have Razin in my team. He's not in right now because I put Rotus in. I normally would have um, Rotus kicking off. Yeah, I normally would have as well somebody like a Draco in there, which I don't have to get the poisons up much quicker. So my time is actually just a bit off there. I've only just built Rotus. My time is off. I'm not getting the, the cleanse in time. So that's something I'll have to fix. But anyway, look, let's let this run through. As you can see, it feels like this could be, there's definitely something in this. Um, I want to try it as well with Skull Crushers just to see if he does extend the unkillable buff. If he does, then maybe there's something with him, uh, with her, sorry, the Orc and Santa with the unkillable. Is it a new kind of version of the unkillable team, perhaps? So we're going to try all that in a while. Anyway, I'm going to let this run through and I'll show you how we get on. Okay, so at eight minutes in, we're just losing our champions. We actually lost Marta and Sandlash first because they're just negative affinity, which doesn't help us in this fight. You'll see here, so we come in just under 25 million. I've realized that my Rotas is not even booked, which is obviously a massive chunk of damage that we're not going to be doing there. But overall, pretty solid run for Ultra Nightmare um, in this setup. So I don't have a weekend out there. Um, I don't have any, any masteries done on Rotas at all. And yeah, we just kind of come in. What I'm going to do is just flick in. I just want to try Skull Crusher in a build. So I'm just going to go back to a more of a, a kind of standard setup that I would do. Um, to I think. So normally, what my team would be, it would look like this. Where are you, Skull Crusher? Me old buddy, me old pal. So normally this would be my team and it's generally around a 35 million team something like that i'm just wondering who's going to be the best person to replace i guess it's razin i guess razin coming out is the best option let me see there she is we've done double counter we don't have a week in again um, but we've got poisons, we've got extend debuffs. So all, all I really want to try here is does it extend unkillable? I'm guessing it does. Uh, so I'm not going to auto this time to start with. I just want to see if it actually works on unkillable buff. We're going to get a counter up. Again, I've got my skull crusher slower, so he's coming in for the second counter in my setup. I'm not going to extend yet. I want to wait until Skull Crusher does his uh, counter attack and unkillable here. Obviously, he's got one turn of his counter attack and one turn of his unkillable up. Get decrease attack on. The reason why this is interesting to me is because it might mean that he can take the big hit, second hit, like he's just done and he takes the brunt of that as the game goes on but then he might also be able to uh, it doesn't extend <laughs> or did it no it didn't extend um that's a shame that's a shame i was thinking he might also be able to just kind of like ride the unkillable 
for the second big hit as well. But it doesn't work. Okay, I'm going to alter this through and uh, we'll just sort of see how we get on for, for our damage. But it's probably not going to be too much different from the last run. So just coming into now, what, 7 minutes 20. What's really apparent to me is how well she pairs with somebody else that has got the ally protection. So she basically acts as like the secondary ally protection champion. You really need two. So if you've got a skull crusher running and he puts his ally protection up, he takes a big hit the first time and is very vulnerable for the second hit. You see there, she's just gone unkillable because she took a massive proportion of that hit that just came on. So it's just that ability is game changing for a lot of accounts. I can tell you that now. Um, so you see now skull crusher is now taking it over. So he's taking the unkillable version really and the ally protection. And has then saved everybody else a load of life. So what we're doing is we're sharing HP between two champions in the fight. But the difference between the Sandlashed and some of the other champions that can do it is that Sandlashed hits hard. Yeah. So if you think about a Jareg that can do it, uh, there's a there's a number of others, but most of them you can't kick much damage out of. Whereas Sandlashed actually does a good share of damage herself. We're just starting to lose champions now. What we're eight thirty. Literally full auto. You can see the debuff bar. I've not kind of run it with Bad L getting his poisons up and stuff like that. I literally set up at the start, as you saw, and then I've hit auto since then. Everything runs through really, really clean. Um, but yeah, you see, you just see it coming again there. She just took a massive chunk of damage off of the Skull Crusher. Um, in fact, ideally, she would have done it this turn rather than that turn, but it's fine. Uh, it just means that we are lasting way longer. Bad L heals are kind of coming through for longer and longer because they're getting extended. Ally protection is getting extended. Counter attacks getting extended. So um, I don't think Vizier has been outside of his veil for the whole match. <laughs> it's just pretty nutty champion. I, I don't know if we're going to be doing insane damage here because it's very difficult to fit in all of the pieces that you want. You know, I want weaken in there. I want quicker kind of lay down of poisons, which could be someone like my Draco. Um, I think I want to find a team that gets rid of Vizier, even though Vizier is insanely good, and perhaps just kind of works on buffs and debuffs. I could literally just swap Vizier out and pull Draco in, and I maybe would do more damage, I'm not sure. Probably would, actually. I'd probably still have my poisons running through. I definitely would have my decreased defense and weaken on a lot of the time. See again there, she's just tanked so much damage for this team, it's insane. Like, would... It's hard to even describe how much she has just done in that one ability there. It's insane. And obviously Skullcrusher takes it over. He's tanking the damage for everyone this turn. It just is enabling us to go for many more turns. And when you've got a team which is based around Vizier extending debuffs, what you want is to just go on and on and on for as many turns as you can, keeping those poisons ticking through. Um, so I think this is going to be quite a good run, actually. Considering we've got a couple of epics in the team. There goes, oh, there we go. Everyone's taking a beating at that hit. This is going to be the end. But yeah, I feel like this is going to be a reasonable run. We've come in, yeah, 32 odd million. That's pretty decent. Um, probably the main thing that I would need to do here is just in terms of pushing to the next level of damage with this type of setup, is I'd probably just take Vizier out, Marta out, and put in Ultan because he he hits hard, and maybe put in a, a Razin who also hits really, really hard, and just get myself going on crazy damage. Or maybe I need the Draco in, actually. It's too difficult. It's too difficult to think what to do, but there's definitely something in this setup. Um, what's even more interesting for me, and I don't really have the team to do it, I think Sandlash would be insane in a speed comp, especially a speed comp that's got Crisk in it as well. The Crisk lays speed, Sandlash and and lays increased defense. I think on the same ability, um, Sandlash extends all of those buffs. Crisk on his next turn extends all of those buffs again, and then basically you just have your team running at 100 miles an hour throughout the whole fight with buffs on all the time. If you can throw a Valkyrie into the mix as well, you may as well just go to bed, wake up in the morning and see if your team are still alive because I think they will be. And I think you can easily punch out a 50 million key with Sandlashed in a composition. Just need to work out exactly which one.
But guys, that's her in Clan Boss. I think that's enough of that. Let's just twitch out that banner and get her into some of the other content. Banner, banner, banner. So we're going to throw an accuracy banner on her now. So 212 accuracy now. So that's going to be enough to land the debuffs in dungeons. I could do with a bit more speed, really. I've got her in HP boots here. So let's switch her back into speed boots for dungeons. Beautiful. Okay. So she is going to come in and do some work for us in dungeons as well, I think. Let's start with Ice Golem. It's a reasonable affinity here. So let's have her in as our lead. Increased defense. I want to put her in with mostly a mage because he just puts buffs out for days. So he's got three buffs that he puts up. Increased defense, increased crit. Um, we're going to throw in a debuffer. It's going to be our Tyrell. Is it? No, it's not. No, it's not. It's going to be our Tomb Lord. Tomb Lord's better at debuffing on Ice Golem because he'll do it on the main boss. Tyrell won't do it on the main boss. Uh, so we've got Poison. We've got debuffs. We've got buffs. Extend buffs and Provoke. I guess this could work. Maybe I'll take him out. Maybe we go with. Feels good. Let's see what sort of work she can do in dungeons. Uh, especially excited to see her when we've got somebody who puts out so many buffs like this. So we've got decreased defense and weakens gone out. There goes an AoE hit. 40k across the board AoE. At the same time, she's just extended all of our buffs. Tell me that is not an insanely strong move right there. Which just enables us to get through the dungeon pretty fast. Loads of buffs on. Slamming down these people. Armag is in there doing his job as well. Just done a, uh, just done a guide on Armago if you haven't seen it. He's really cool. So she just tried to extend no buffs, which is a bit of a silly move. Got one provoke off there, which is helpful. So she should, on that same move, reduce the buffs of the enemy team as well, I believe. So we're just waiting for that to come back off cooldown. I guess, I mean, a free turn ability here from these dogs is pretty mental anyway but yeah. so there we go yeah decreased buff duration there so it's now down to one turn which is nice so again it's just helping you through got provoke off there to stop her doing the main abilities all of these little things just make things much easier for you when you're trying to get through these waves i can't stress that enough you know provokes um just reducing the, the turn on their buffs improving your buffs all of those things are just insanely good we would have just lost Miscreated Monster there. She tanked up all of that damage for him. And we are back in the fight. Armager's got the ability to um, stop these guys reviving if he times it right. So hoping that comes off as well in the same part. That would have been the ability there. Didn't, didn't quite get the kill. Got a provoke off here. So we shouldn't get the AoE. Uh, died anyway. But we, should, we wouldn't have got the AoE a decrease um what should you call it heal heal reduction so anyway look we look pretty pretty clean i'm going to run this through to the end show you the ending um but yeah feels like she is going to be strong in this dungeon just because of her utility just because of there's another provoke off look at that 50 percent chance i mean that's pretty decent so we're no longer going to get the aoe decrease defense on us um yeah it's pretty cool Anyway, I'm going to play it through and we'll go on to the next one. So we're just coming in for the kill. At no point have we been at risk here because actually she has, every time we've looked like we might take a big hit, she's put that ability on a passive and has just tanked up a load of damage. Uh, so she's actually come out as basically the highest damage dealer in line with Tomb Lord there. Insane, insane champion. They're not too bad. Um, so let's have a look at dragons. Now, for getting through the waves in Dragon, she's basically going to be the same as what we've just seen. Her affinity is not ideal here. 
So that's something to be aware of. The affinity is not perfect for dragons, for dragon 20. Obviously, if you're further down in dragons, then that is good. Still got a nice aura, though. It does mean she's going to soak up a lot of the attention. And as a defensive champion, you'd rather a defensive champion is soaking attention than your damage dealers. So let's go with this again. Go with our Kale. Oh, I didn't mean to do a two man. <laughs> Whoops, start that again. That is not going to work. Um, yeah, so what I meant to do was pick some actual champions to help fight. So, yeah, so we've got Kale going in. I think we're going with some speed up. One, two, three, four. What else do we need? A decrease defense champ. Yeah. That should be okay. The main thing which I think she's going to be able to do for us in this fight, so getting through the waves is going to be very similar to what we've just seen with um, with the Ice Golem fight. She's going to do work, she's going to put some damage in for us, but ultimately she's just going to be keeping our buffs flowing um, and drawing attention in this part of the fight. So she's going to be taking the attention of these guys, uh, which, is, which is good because actually I'd rather she got the attention, as I said, than, than someone like a War Maiden. Um, but what I'm interested in is when we start taking those big hits from the dragon. So I'll flick through. We should be, have no worries on waves. I'll flick through and I'll show you uh, what the dragon fight looks like. Here we go. We're on the dragon. Now, she's obviously not going to provoke the dragon or anything like that. The main thing I wanted to see is when the dragon does his big hit, does her ability to tank that damage dramatically reduce the threat to everybody else? And I think that it will. So here we go. Actually, no one even took more than 50% health, so, she, so we were fine that time. She will do those extend things like the block debuffs that Morsley and May just putting out for us. Here it goes. See that? So we just ramped it up another turn. Yeah, so we're not taking enough damage. If you guys were taking a chunk more damage than I just took there, what would happen is instead of everybody looking like they're going down to 20 odd percent health, it would actually just come in and tank that damage up for you so she would become like i think she's massively useful for anyone who's getting towards this stage of the game but perhaps hasn't got quite as an advanced great hall as i've got or generally as an advanced team as i've got um but yeah there you go see she's just gone unkillable she's tanked up all of that damage for everybody else um she's nutty she's literally like insanely strong in this game i really like her um she's done second most damage by a fair chunk kale's done the 1.8 he's my poisoner in here he's going to do the damage but she has done decent work for me there do not need poison sets so let's move on now spiders all i was thinking with spiders is that she's she's not conventionally going to be really strong but what she could do is you've got somebody that is speeding you up if you've got somebody that's laying in those deep, uh, laying in those buffs, you try and enable someone like an HP burner to do their job. So if I pull in my HP burner, so what I think she can do here is just be someone that basically extends the buffs. So nothing more than that. So it's, I don't, she's not game changer in this dungeon, but I think she's useful. She's going to put out some damage. She's going to do AOE damage. If you're at spiders. 10 to 15 she just her aoe hits alone will be strong um also when the spider does his big hit she's going to chunk in and take some of that damage so she could be useful but i don't think she's insane um if you've got a tyrant then she pairs with tyrant really really well i don't have one so i would go speed up i would put my buffs on through my morsian mage i'd do big old bat shields and then my HP burn goes out. And then I would extend all of these buffs. See all of these buffs we've got up here? Extend them all for a turn. And now everybody's got block debuffs on. Uh, sorry, these two didn't do it. I, the turn order's slightly wrong. Ideally, I'd have more seeing mage going just before Sandlashed, and then it would be perfect. Um, the only challenge is I'm probably, with this setup I've just got here, I'm doing too much damage to the spiderlings straight out. Um, but you see here, they're going for Morsi and Mage because he's negative affinity. He's just literally like, don't worry lads, I'm blocking all of those poisons. We are fine. 
don't worry yourself. Um, so yeah, so I could just alter it. The trouble is I, I do too much AoE damage in this team. So what's going to happen is it's going to be relatively slow because ideally with an HP burn setup, you don't hit the Spiderlings too hard with AoEs. I'd be better off with like my Arminger in this set somewhere. Um, anyway, I'm going to let this run through and I'll kick back in at the end. Okay, well, super slow because I ended up taking it on manual just to get the order going right, but fine. It did her job. It's not where she's best. Um, so I think that's probably going to be that. Fire Knights is similar to what we've seen, really. She's not going to do anything specifically good in Fire Knights. She's just going to help your team with buffs and things like that. So um, if you've got a counter attacker in there, then it's worth bringing her in. She will extend the counter attack for another turn, that type of thing. But I don't think I'm going to show it because it's probably pretty dull. I will show her just quickly in an arena fight. We've got here some buffs. Oh god, I don't want to fight Torment really. Um, think of some sensible team to fight. Like oh, this. Um, so she's going to come in, extend our buffs, decrease their buffs. That's the idea. Maybe it's like this. Like this. So Arena, I don't think she's going to be like an Arena specialist, but she will be useful to be able to just take control of some of the fights at times. The tons of buffs on here, a whole team of buffs. Might not even get a go. Woo! Um... <laughs> She actually just tanked up so much damage then to let me actually have a turn. So what we can do here, we can extend our buffs. We can reduce their their buffs. Reduce their buffs. Let me just check. Yeah, so anything with one turn like this, 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 we can get rid of. But we are going to get counterattacked here, which might kill us. So I'm going to try it anyway. So that's the whole point of bringing her in. So we should extend ours, reduce theirs. So we've cleared off tons of buffs there, which is great. She's unkillable anyway, so the counterattacks, apart from the AoE ones, weren't doing too much to us. The trouble is we're so low here, we might just die anyway. But let's get some burns out, see what we can do. Decent damage. Don't die. Ugh. Tough team to fight. Tough team to fight. I haven't got enough damage in this team left to deal with this, I don't think. But you get the idea. You get the idea. She's useful, definitely. I've just got a chunk of damage there. Never know your luck. Carry on. Carry on. Look at this, though. She's just so bonkers. Makes me feel a little bit sick playing against someone like a Seafee that they just introduced to the game and she's just stupidly busted. Just like. It's just dumb. Totally dumb champion. The Arbiter's a problem. I don't think I've got enough to bring a... Yeah, is... Everyone's healing up. Great job on the new champions, guys. Great job. Anyway, you get the idea. She can be useful in the arena. Definitely, if you are like fighting your way through mid-tier golds, and you're coming against a lot of champions with with buffs and you you don't have anyone else to clear them. Like if I had Madame Cerise in there, she does a better job of the same thing. Um, the thing which um, Sandlash does is she's actually able to tank a ton of damage for your team, which gives you a better chance of having a go. But ultimately, um, someone like Cerise does a better job of the same kind of thing that's going on. So this might be a team to have a look at. In a really low team power, it's almost gone from one to the other here in terms of opposite sort of um, opposite stuff. But buff up. Um, we're just going to get a provoke off, and I'm not going to kill her. <laughs> to kill everyone. Yeah. So the idea here, you see, buff, buff. We're going to rip those off. We're going to extend as probably kill them anyway. 
Not quite. But yeah, get the idea. You get the idea. She can definitely be useful. And then when you've got a single target that you just want to try and take out, you would go in with your A1 and you would just provoke that target. So let's try one more team. Loads of buffs here. Bit of stuff to tank. Um, probably not strong enough to take them on. This setup. Let's try this. Middle of the road. You see tons of buffs on again. I don't want to do my burns because I want the burns to actually land. So I'm going to just go in with the taunt just for a hit. That's all I'm looking for there. Get my buffs on. Try and rip hers off. Thank you very much. And then we're going to go extend our buffs and try and reduce all of these down. Cleared most of them off. I'm at like 220 accuracy here. So it's about right for gold four. If I wanted to use her for the same ability in flat, I'd need to push her accuracy right up to like 500. Um, you see there, so they come out of a big hit. She's tanked up loads of that damage. And then she's going to enable us to now put the damage out. She's also got an A1, which does a decent hit, 8 odd K twice. So 20 odd K hits. Um, I'll take Tay Rail out next. burn to death anyway but we've got an aoe here and that's that's that so but guys that's going to be it for san lash survivor she's one of the best epics in the game now um in a number of areas her kit is super unique um if you like this video like and subscribe um and yeah see you all soon in a video coming up this is hell hades signing out